All right, in this video, we're going to integrate the function sine raised to the fifth power of x dx. And what we're going to do is just use a reduction formula. So we actually proved this reduction formula in a separate video. So I'm just going to show how to make use of it. Nothing, nothing too crazy here. Okay, so in this case, the formula says, well, if you have sine raised to the power of n of x dx, and again, n is greater than or equal to 2, it says we basically just get this formula. So what we're going to do in this case is I'm just going to replace all of the n's with 5, right? Because n, um, this n up here is my, going to be my, excuse me, this 5 up here is going to be my value of n. So, okay, so... It says we'll have negative sine of, well, 5 minus 1 will give us to the power of 4, x times cosine x, again all over n, n in this case is 5, plus, okay, well, if we take 5 minus 1, that's going to give us 4, divided by n, which again is 5, and then we're integrating sine of, okay, well, we've got 5 minus 2, 5 minus 2 is just going to give us the power of 3, x dx. Okay, so again, this is why it's called a reduction formula, because we have went from a power of 5. Now we've got an integral involving um, sine, and now it's only raised to the power of 3. Well, we're going to use the formula again, but in this case, our value of n is now going to be equal to 3. Okay, so this first term, the negative sine to the fourth power of x times cosine x over 5, that's still there. We've got plus 4 fifths. And now, again, we're integrating uh, sine cubed of x using our formula. Okay, so the 4 fifths is going to have to get distributed to everything, so let's be careful about that. But it says we have negative sine... Okay, so again, if we take n minus 1, that's just going to give us 3 minus 1, or a power of 2. Got cosine x, again, all over n, which is, in this case, 3. Plus, if we take 3 minus 1, that'll give us 2 over our value of n, which is 3. And then now we're left integrating sine raised to the power of 3 minus 2. Well, 3 minus 2 is just going to be the power of 1. So now we're just integrating sine x. Well, almost done now. Just drop down the first term. Um, if you distribute, well, the positive and the negative will make a negative. We'll have 4 over 15. And then we've got sine squared x times cosine x. If we distribute, okay, so two things. The antiderivative of sine x is going to be negative cosine x. So we would have positive 4 fifths times positive 2 thirds. That would give us 8 over 15. But then because of the negative from the cosine x when we calculate the antiderivative, we'll have negative 8 over 15 when we distribute times cosine x. And then we can just simply tack on our plus C, and now we're finished. So again, just a matter of using that reduction formula twice. Um, if you didn't know this reduction formula, well, I guess one of two things, you could go about deriving it. Or more naturally, probably with this one, um, what I would do is start breaking this up, um, you know, break it up. Um, I would say basically a factor of sine. So kind of the other way to do it. See if I remember here. You could save a factor of sine. So you'd have sine to the fourth x times sine x dx. Okay, so um, right, that's still sine to the fifth power. We could rewrite sine to the fourth as sine squared x squared. So that's my sine to the fourth power times sine x dx. And now we could use a trig identity. We could write sine squared as 1 minus cosine squared x. And at this point, you could use a u substitution. You could let u equal cosine x. du would give you negative sine x dx. And then you're off and running. So I'm not going to go through this whole example, but just wanted to point out to you another way to do it. 
Um, this, to me, would be the more natural way. But again, somebody had asked about the reduction formula for sine, so I thought I'd prove it. And um, you know, if I'm going to prove it, might as well do one example with it. So hopefully, this example il illustrates how to use this reduction formula and these reduction formulas in general. But again, this is a formula. You know, this reduction formula for sine. That's not something I have memorized off the top of my head, or I think I never ever had it memorized. But for high powers of n, it's certainly very useful. Otherwise, you'd have to go through a really laborious process, especially if, if the powers get really big. So, all right, I hope this helps. I hope it makes some sense, and good luck out there.